For Oasis Audio, I'm Wayne Shepherd, and if you've listened to the audiobook edition of Kisses from Katie or read the print edition, you can well imagine what a privilege it is to talk with this young lady. She is in Uganda right now, and we've reached her by cell phone. Uh, I know that's where your heart is, and that's where your body is right now, too. Is that right, Katie? Yes, yes. Tell me your story. I mean, I'm stunned in reading your book and listening to it. I mean, you are how old? Early 20s? <laughs> 23 in November. 23 in November. And here you are. I think you, when you were 19, your heart turned towards Uganda, and you started Amazima Ministries, uh, working with orphans. What does Amazima mean? Amazima in the local language here means truth. And that stood out to me because I wanted these children to know, I mean, not only the truth that they are valuable and they are loved and they are important and they can have a future, also just the truth of, of Christ who loves them and who died for them and who some of them won't care about because being orphaned, they don't always have someone older to take care of them and um, to teach them about those things. So that's what inspired the name. Talk to us about the plight that you first saw back a few years ago and now have spent your life uh, and are spending your life to help these children. What is their plight? I think it was kind of a combination of a few things. I was working at an orphanage that had about 120 children at the time. And in the area where I was working, the orphanage was was probably what most people would have considered the best solution for a lot of the kids. I was just seeing that while the workers were trying their very hardest to provide love, care, and attention for all these kids, they were just understaffed and there wasn't always enough food. And um, so it was just really hard to live there and then to come to find out that a lot of the kids living at the orphanage, while maybe one or both of their parents had died, they had living relatives outside in the community who loved them and who would come visit them but had decided to put them in this orphanage because that was the only way that they could get their school paid for, be fed three times a day and get access to medical care or what have you. And so at the same time, I was teaching kindergarten at the orphanage where I was working and some children from the community would come to class for like the first term. Here there are three terms in the school year and they wouldn't be able to come back second term, and then they would come back third term, um, or they wouldn't, and it was just because a lot of them, also being orphaned, stayed with a grandma or an aunt or an uncle who didn't have the means to pay for all their school fees. And so I just was kind of thinking through and praying through a way that, you know, how can we help these children, either who are staying with their relatives to be able to have what they need as far as education and food and medical care and um, knowledge of the Bible. And how can we help these caregivers who love their children but feel so desperate and so unable to provide that they want to bring them and drop them off at this orphanage because they really do believe that their child will have a better quality of life there when after living at the orphanage for a while. So decided to sponsor just about 20 kids. Um, a couple of them were children whose parents had tried to bring them to the orphanage drop off, and a couple of them were children who had been in my class before but weren't going to be able to go to school anymore. And I thought, well, I know people at home who have some extra money, and it doesn't even cost that much, and I have a little extra money saved up, and so we, we can get these kids back into school and get them um, well fed and well taken care of. And so, I mean, I didn't think I called it even sponsorship or anything. I just asked some friends and my parents, like, hey, would anyone be willing to contribute so that these kids can continue their schooling and we can help these parents take care of these children so that the orphanage isn't the only option? And um we we quickly raised enough money to do that, and as more people started hearing, they said, "Oh yeah, I would love, I would love to contribute to something like that also." And so um, God just continued to provide the funds, and as He provided funds, I worked with pastors and teachers who lived in the area and knew the community well to find other children who might be in need of that kind of service. And I mean, it all grew really, really rapidly, and I mean, it was totally the hand of God. I had no idea really what I was doing, (laughs) Um, 
but it all seemed to happen so fast and the funding came in and there were children who needed the help. And so we, um, with a lot of help from my parents and help here from friends on this side, we were able to establish a nonprofit that's primary focus initially was to do child sponsorship. These children who didn't have enough paired up with someone in America who had a had a friend, um, the child is blessed through being able to receive their basic needs and the donor is blessed through being able to take care of the, the child and a letter from them and knowing that they're contributing to someone on a very personal level. Uh, Katie, we're grateful for all those people who sponsor children, but you are living your life there. You, you've given your life at this point to being there, and you've sacrificed, and I know you do it in the name of Christ, but talk to me about what it's been like for you personally. <laughs> I guess most days I don't feel like I've sacrificed much, or that in light of how blessed I am and how... Um, how much God is, is doing in, in my life and in the life of family, I don't, I mean, it doesn't feel like sacrifice. And I think that, I think that when we're serving Christ with all of ourselves and really doing what we're called to do, but it doesn't feel like sacrifice. And that doesn't mean that it's not hard. I mean, it's hard. Some days it is hard. Today, today it was hard. There were... I mean, there were people on my front porch who couldn't get medical attention anywhere else. And, I mean, I was trying to homeschool my kids, and there was a lady who was starving to death. And, I mean, it's it's always hard. But but hard in in a good way, I think. Hard, hard and good. Hmm. I think you say in your book that love is hard, uh, and you make that point very clear. Tell me about your own children. Now, here you are, 23 years old, and you've got how many children? I have 13. They, I mean, same way that Amazima kind of developed. Um, three little girls were brought to my home after their house collapsed on them, and um, I won't I won't tell the whole story right here because it's in the book pretty pretty descriptive and um just I mean my initial intent wasn't to adopt them it was to just you know open my home and let them live with me for as long as they needed or until we found a better solution and um after a lot of prayer I I felt God really clearly speak to me through my youngest that we were to be a family just grew in me a heart for for adoption and for growing my family and I mean, slowly over time, he has brought me more daughters. And my first, I mean, my first reaction is not, oh, this this child needs family. Let's let's adopt her. Um, We definitely always look for another solution, a family member, a way for the child to be raised by someone who is a biological relative. And unfortunately, sometimes that that's not the case and that doesn't happen. And, um, so we pray as a family and I pray by myself and we decide to bring another child in. And so legally is, is kind of confusing. I'm the foster parent of all of them. And then I'm the court appointed legal guardian of about half of them, hopefully soon to be the other half. And then the law in the United States that you can finalize your adoption, um, until you're 25. So I use the word adoption, but I mean it in the sense of adoption as in accepting a child as your own. Um, They're not all fully legally adopted, but there will be one day and we're just still, I mean, we want to respect the law here. And so we're just um, going through the paperwork process and through the court process. I don't plan to ever go anywhere. So one day it'll be finished and Until then, it doesn't matter. We all live here together, and we are a family, and they're growing fast. (laughs) I'm sitting here on the side of the bed with my littlest, and she is making me this mom. I just wanted to go to sleep. Why do you keep talking? She's so good. Well, I tell you, the the book is going to fill in many of the details of what life is like for you. It's just a, an incredible story of, of God's love through a person, through you. 
And we all are amazed at uh, what God is doing through you. And it's hard for us to imagine what life is like for you. That's why the book is so helpful. I want to talk to you because you you feed the children. You you have a dream for educating these children. There's vocational training. What are some of your hopes and dreams for the future? Wow, that's a hard question. And I feel like it's a question that I'm about to get asked a lot as, um, as the book is about to release here. And there is so much unknown, and so on on a day to day basis, I do try to just kind of take things one day at a time because to even think past one day at a time seems so overwhelming sometimes. And I think that that's, I mean, I think that that's a good place to be because that's a place of just total reliance. But at the same time, I think that it's good to have um, hopes and vision for the future. And of course, I mean, those things are subject to change based on what God wants and um, what he He does. But we really just want to say yes to whatever God puts in front of us. Our goals, we have about 400 children sponsored um, individuals and so their education is paid for in that way. And we definitely, um, I, I think that our goal would not be right now to add more children as much as it is to just really grow these children that we are already sponsoring to our full potential because we could sponsor more and more more and more children. But um, I think instead of doing that, our goal is really to just um, see these children all the way through school. We have a college fund set up for them if they choose to go to university. They have the option if they don't want to go to university of vocational training after they finish here secondary school, which is like high school. And we really just want to see them reach their full potential as future leaders of Uganda. And we definitely want to be able to empower. I think as a parent, I've seen really the importance of empowering a person to take care of their own child because, I mean, it's great to come in with sponsorship and walk alongside these people and say, I will help you. I want your child to remain in your home. But I also know the joy you feel when you are able to provide for your own child and not really rely on outside help. And so we're definitely moving more toward uh, vocational training and job training and some job creation. We have a group of women who make necklaces that we sell in the States, and that's been really wonderful and successful. So we would love to see more programs like that implemented so these people can know the joy of being able to care for their own kids, being able to make their own money and pay for the school fees themselves. Um, We definitely want some of the children in our program to be able to be educated and have have a job and then be able to provide for their own children that way. And so our heart is really just to walk alongside these people and help them in whatever we can and ultimately just um, instill hope in them that it comes from Jesus. And it's all done in the name of Jesus. Uh, Katie, uh, the book is titled Kisses from Katie. Where did the title come from? <laughs> it was, it's the name of my blog, and so I understand why ultimately um, everyone was really excited about using the same title that is the web domain name of my blog. Honestly, though, I didn't think that people were going to read my blog. <laughs> I thought, like, my mom and my dad and my grandma <laughs> might read my blog, and so... <laughs> We'll make it my email address, and it'll be simple <laughs> for them to remember. Um, I might have thought more about it if I thought that it would be the title of a book one day. But I think it works. You know, I think it's a great title. I, I really do, and uh, I'm so glad that you've put this book together. I want everyone to know that there are pictures of you and the children on the website. It's amazima.org, A-M-A-Z-I-M-A.org. You can also look it up on YouTube and see some videos and watch some uh, speaking that Katie has done. Uh, just search on YouTube for Amazima or for Katie Davis. Uh, Katie, even though the cell phone kind of jumbled your words at times today, your heart comes through very loud and clear to us all the way from Uganda. So thank you. Uh, God bless you. And I hope that as a result of this book, you're going to find a lot more people interested in helping out what you're doing over there. Well, thank you so much. That's Katie Davis, the author of Kisses from Katie, a story of relentless love and redemption. All the way from Uganda here on the telephone with us. And for Oasis Audio, I'm Wayne Shepherd.